I'm on the line right now with Nashville bass, roots and blues, and American guitar player, the one and only Justin Johnson. Now, I know you've seen this guy. He uh, is all over YouTube playing his guitar, which is uh, actually molded and shaped out of one of his guitars, I say, uh, out of a shovel. <laughs> it's just really, it's extremely awesome, man. I mean, it's really, uh, it's a lot of people have been in awe looking at it. Uh, you know, he's been hailed by Guitar World as a, a must-see act. John Carter Cash has called him uh, American Master. And the Motor City Madman, you know, the one and only Ted Nugent has said, this guy's a music visionary. He's uh, actually working on a new album now called Driving It Down. And uh, you could actually help out with the album if you go to kickstarter.com and uh, search Justin Johnson album and it'll pop right up. Or go to uh, Justin Johnson on excuse me, justinjohnsonlive.com and uh, you can follow the links there and uh, help out with a new album, man. So, uh, let's just get right down to it, man. Justin, what you doing, my brother? Oh, that you just uh, you just described what I'm doing right now. We're neck deep and breaking ground on this new album. I'm really excited about it. Got some great uh, guest musicians I'm going to be collaborating with on this album. It's going to be awesome. I'm, I'm really looking forward to releasing it. You know... <clears throat> I know you get tired of getting asked this question, man, but, you know, I'm going to ask it anyways. And, and I'm asking for a reason because, you know, the other day I was showing one of my coworkers at work. Yeah, I was goofing off at work. <laughs> but uh, I was showing one of my coworkers at work uh, one of the videos, and uh, he was just in awe. And he actually shouted, how in the, how in the hell does he do that? What gave, man, why would he pick up a shovel and play with it? How did he come up with that? So... Apparently, my first question is not actually from me. It's from one of my coworkers. It's where did you come up with that? <laughs> well, the uh, yeah, the video you're talking about is one. Uh, it's called cranking cranking up the three string shovel guitar. And um, when I was touring last year, I, I was I was touring the U.S. coast to coast, and uh, when we were going through the Mississippi Delta. Um, a guitar builder came out to one of my shows. His name was Roger Barry, and was from Mississippi Blues Guitars. And he brought this guitar out. It was a, a shovel, basically of a three-string slide guitar. There were no frets. You had to play it with a slide, uh, like a traditional roots instrument style. And um, the platform for the instrument was this shovel. And um, I plugged it in, uh, came up with a tuning for it, a three-string tuning and started playing it, and it just sounded amazing, you know, and that's the case with a lot of these uh, homemade instruments, I've found objects, you never know what they're going to sound like, but a lot of times they just sound amazing, you know, there's nothing like it, and so I loved it, and I kept playing with it, I, I finished the tour, I'd always bring it out to shows, and uh, about a month ago, um, I was in the back, uh, on the back deck, and uh, my fiance Nikki, we decided, well, let's film something. I'm going to make something up really quick. I had the three-string shovel guitar, and I just made something up. I came up with an improvisation, just feeling the, you know, feeling the vibe at the moment. And uh, we posted it online a little later on that afternoon. And, uh, you know, a week later, we had about 30 million views on that video on Facebook, about a million and a half on YouTube. It was all over the place, and uh, it just really took off. You know, and just like you're saying, people see... I think people see a, someone playing a shovel guitar, first of all, and think, you know, well, that, that just looks, you know, that look, looks interesting. I've never seen that before, maybe. And, uh, and then they realize, well, that, you know, sounds like a legitimate musical instrument, you know, the tone of it is amazing. You know, it just sounds and feels great when you're playing it. And I think that surprises a lot of people. Are, are you surprised with, with the outpour of, I mean, this... The video has garnered, like you said, all them millions of hits. Are you surprised with it, or did you? I mean, it's really taken off. Yeah, you know, I'm just, I'm just really happy that people are getting into it because, you know, if I can share my love for that tradition of uh, roots music, blues, slide guitar, you know, whatever it takes to turn people onto that and get people thinking outside the box, you know, about you know these traditions aren't dead; they're, they're alive. You know, they're as healthy and alive as they've ever been. If I can play some kind of small role in getting people's attention tuned into that, then I'm doing my job, I feel like. You know, you've had two very well-received albums. You know, Smoke and Mirrors, the double album set, and um, If Walls Could Talk. W what about this new full-length album that you're working on now, uh, Driving It Down? Is there going to be anything different for, for the fans that they should be looking out for? 
Well, yeah, you know, and it's the fans. The fans, a lot of times, are where I give, you know, ideas for albums. You know, what are people asking for? What does it seem like people want to hear next? Uh, and uh, my last two albums, like you said, Smoke and Mirrors and It Falls to Top, they're both um, all instrumental. And um, I played every instrument on both of those albums, you know, so there's about 30, give or take, about 30 instruments on each of those albums. And I played every single part on every single song. This album is going to be, you know, it's called Driving It Down because it's going to be that kind of, that driving music, you know, that revved up music that you just want to jump in the car and cruise down the highway to. And um, so I'm going to be bringing in guest musicians on this album, something I've never done before on a solo release. And um, so it's going to have drums, bass, you know, probably have some keys, horns, harmonica, maybe even some vocals. So, you know, right now we're still... Um, in that early phase, but I can tell you, um, it's exciting, the, the ideas we've come up with, the people that have expressed interest, the musicians that want to be part of it, it's going to be really exciting, and, you know, again, it's the fans have been asking for an album like this, and uh, we're going to give it to them. So it sounds like the fans are going to be extremely appeased with this project. We've, we've already gotten a great response to it, um, because I'm an independent artist, uh, and don't have, you know, like a major record label backing it, fronting the, um, you know, money to make the album and produce it, all the expenses that go into it. Um, the way that I am able to do that is with the fans, basically. You know, um, I'm funding it right now with the Kickstarter campaign, like you mentioned. And that's, uh, if you don't know what a Kickstarter campaign is, it's a crowdfunding uh, platform where the fans can basically buy the album before it's out. And that's how we make the album, you know. And so, um, not only that, but they can get other music, merchandise, um, rewards that might only be available through this Kickstarter. Like, um, I'll be personally making some guitars, which I usually only do during these fundraisers. Um, you can buy a, a shovel guitar like the one in that video. But that money goes to making the album. And, and what that does is it makes it to where, you know, basically if the fans are paying for the album, my obligation is to put that music down that those fans want to listen to, you know. Um, and that's a really pure way of doing it. I love doing it that way because, you know, a lot of times you hear these horror stories with musicians that might get locked into a contract and, and they're, then they're making music for, you know, the business side of it, not the actual listener side of it. And I love keeping it pure like that. And apparently you have a lot of people who have faith in you, man, who really like you because... The Kickstarter has really done has done really good. Yeah, well, you know, it, I think in the first uh, six or seven days, we reached our minimum goal. You know, so there's a minimum goal you have to set with with a fundraiser like that in order for it to happen. But you know, now is the really fun part, uh, both for us as you know, for for us as the musicians making it, and for the fans who are helping to make it happen. Because um, basically, the more gets raised by the Kickstarter, we're going to put every penny of that into the album, you know, no matter how much gets raised. Um, if we double the uh, goal, the minimum goal that we set, we're going to double the album, and it's going to be a double album. Um, the more, you know, people invest in it, the more people pre-order it, the more we'll be able to um, hire, you know, some great, inspiring, awesome guest musicians, too. And we've been talking to some really great ones. Uh, some really great artists about being on this album who are excited to be part of it. And, uh, you know, that's just the magic of it. I'm really enjoying the collaborative element of this album. Well, um, and, and like I said, you go to kickstarter.com. There is an actual um, link and all that, but, man, I accidentally screwed up and didn't add it onto my list of questions. To, But when I post this, I will, I will post the link so all the listeners can, you know, go exact, you know, click on it and go right to your Kickstarter project. Now, man, how is it working with John Carter? Because, you know, John Carter Cash, because, I mean, not only working with the guy, but, I mean, recording in the famous Cash Cabin studio, because, man, there's a lot of rich history in that place. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And that's one of the first things that struck me about, well, Cash Cabin studio is just that you're walking in there. And this used to be Johnny Cash's, you know, personal getaway in the woods um and you know right on old hickory lake there in the woods and um you can tell you know i mean it's like walking into someone's living room and um 
when he did his, when Johnny Cash went in to work on his American recordings, some of his most famous recordings, those ones at the end of his career there, um, he got Rick Rubin, the producer, to come in. They turned his cabin into the studio. And um, since then, his son, John Carter Cash, um, he has added to it. You know, he's made it into some, like, an amazing world-class studio. And it's a private studio, so it, it really is like, you know, it's like a living room. Everywhere you look around, you see the history of Johnny Cash, June Carter, the Cash and Carter family. Um, John Carter Cash's, you know, life is in there in that room. Um, Chuck Turner, who was the engineer and co-producer of It's Wild to Talk, um, it was just an amazing, amazing engineer. You know, if you can envision it, he can capture the sound of it. And uh, John Carter Cash, you know, he loves the history like I do, and he wants those traditions to come through in the music, and he understands, you know, what an instrument or what a, uh, you know, an atmosphere can do to bring a little bit more of that magic out of the music. That's one of the things that I loved about working with him when he was producing As Well As Could Talk With Us, is uh, really just bringing that magic out of every note and out of every possible situation. Do um, do you ever find yourself just thinking, wow, I mean, because like I said, this is Johnny Cash, June Carter Cash, George Jones has recorded there, Merle Haggard, I mean, the list just goes on. Do you ever just, just find yourself like, wow, I mean, just in awe at times? Oh, absolutely, you know, and that's what it's all about when you're recording. Um, you know, Early on, when I was just starting uh, my first few recordings I did with bands, like way back in the day, you know, you might be in the studio, and, and a lot of studios, even if they had, you know, it might be a great studio, even with nice equipment, that kind of thing. But um, if sometimes you walk in and it's it's not very inspiring, you know, or it's like walking into a doctor's office where it's really sterile or a museum, you don't want to touch anything, you know what I mean? And yeah. so. Um, I, I would find myself, I remember myself in those situations, kind of closing my eyes before recording and imagining I was uh, somewhere else, you know, imagining I was somewhere where the inspiration would be stronger. And um, early on, you know, with uh, my fiance Nikki and I would talk about projects. This goes back to my first album, Smoke and Mirrors. We'd think, you know, where are we going to record this? Because we need this we want the environment we're in to be informing those notes, you know, and we don't want to pretend we're someone else, somewhere else. We want to know where we are and have that be inspiring. And uh, that's why, you know, with my first album, Smoke and Mirrors, I recorded it at Sun Studio, which, uh, you know, ironically, coincidentally, was where Johnny Cash recorded his first uh, song ever. And same with Elvis, uh, you know, Jerry Lee Lewis, um, all of the Roy Orbison. They recorded their first album in that room, and I recorded my first solo album in that room. And that just, you know, it just gives me goosebumps to this day thinking about that. And um, same thing when, when I met John Carter Cash and he gave me a tour of Cash Cabin Studio. Um, I had that same feeling, that same goosebump feeling where you just know the magic is here. You know, you don't, you don't have to pretend you're somewhere else when you're recording in those walls. And, um, but, you know, that kind of went along with the idea of if walls could talk. I mean, those walls were talking, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, now, you know, speaking of, of musical greats, if you could share the stage with any musician, past or present, uh, who would you like to play with and, and, and why? Oh, man, that's such a, <laughs> such a heavy question because, you know, there's so many. Um, you know, I think about... You know, when I think about my, my musical uh, heroes on guitar, um, sort of like I couldn't I couldn't stand on, you know, it's like a tripod, you know. It wouldn't be standing if one of those three legs wasn't there. And so I'm just going to have to change the answer and give you three names. Uh, That'd be great. That's but, fine. you know, it would be um, Jimi Hendrix, uh, Doc Watson, and Django Reinhardt. You know, those three are from completely different worlds, three completely different sounds. But um, I can't really imagine what I would think the guitar was all about if I hadn't really come across those three guitar players. I think they really defined my style. And, and that's what makes you unique because, you know, you, you're, you're naming three guys here from, like, different backgrounds, and it's just, I guess that's what makes you makes you you. Um, you know, i, I got to ask this, you know, I'm not trying to get too personal, but there, there's fans out there who... 
they want to know more about Justin Johnson. Um, so when you when you're when you're not you know making music or doing anything with music, what what is your favorite pastime besides music? I guess, you know, if we're not doing something um, musical, we're probably sleeping and dreaming about music. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Like with me and me and Nikki, you know, the, one of the things I love most about my life uh, is that I get to spend every day with Nikki and that we get to do everything that we're doing together. You know, it's our job and our passion, our love. Um, but it's all about art and it's about sharing that those experiences, you know, and um I guess, you know, if it's not about music, it's about some other form of art, whether it's filmmaking or uh, visual art, you know, photography. Um, there's something that we really just uh, can't shake about that, that uh, expression and the endless options people have for expressing themselves. And, you know, I guess that's one of the things I love about roots instruments in general. You know, these instruments that are made out of... Uh, you know, sometimes it's literally like junk, you know? I mean, something that someone would take out of a trash can. And the fact that you can make something incredibly beautiful out of that musically, that's something that offers endless inspiration to me. You know, you think about those early blues uh, players in the Delta. They couldn't go out and buy a guitar, so they made, you know, they made music, created something out of nothing. Um, and... I guess that's it, you know, it's just self-expression. That's what we think about all the time. Well, I guess you could, you, I could personally dig out of my trash can a bunch of beer cans and make some drums or something. It would be... <laughs> yeah, you know, you <laughs> chain them together, make some percussion. Yeah, the beer can <laughs> percussion, there you go. <laughs> hey, there you go. I could, hey, I could be on your next album. I could have my beer cans. You could have your <laughs> shovel. I mean, so, yeah. uh, um, just a few more questions, and I do thank you for coming on the program, but, uh, your, your thoughts on having your very own signature guitar, you know, the three-string shovel guitar, which if you go to uh, rootsmusicschool.com slash shovel guitar, you could actually um, purchase that. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, when that video went viral, um, I got a lot of people who approached me um, about how they could get a three-string shovel. And again, I didn't make that. That was made by Roger Perry from Mississippi Blues Guitar in Mississippi. And uh, I called Roger up, and, uh, you know, after that video went, went crazy, and uh, it took me a while to even get through to him because he was getting so many calls about people wanting that, uh, wanting a shovel guitar like that. And uh, he said, uh, Justin, you know, I'm a, I've got a full-time, I'm a full-time electrician. I've got employees, you know. I can't <laughs> just stop everything to build shovels uh you know, because he really, he loves building instruments like that, but it's a, it's a passion and, and a hobby for him. Um, so he asked, you know, can we can we work together to, to find, you know, a way to get these people what they want? And um, and I said, yeah, absolutely, you know. Um, and so I approached uh, a, a buddy of mine, a great instrument builder, Kevin Hamilton, from Tambo and CBGs in Texas. He lives right outside of Dallas, Texas. And... Uh, He's, he can build anything, you know, and so um, I contacted someone I know who builds great pickups, uh, hand hand wires, hand winds, uh, his own pickups, makes them from scratch, and that's the actual electrical component that makes the sound come from the strings, you know, it's right under the string. So um, I got these people, these different people, and they're all benefiting from this, you know, which I love. We've got sort of a little community that's being built around making these shovels, and they're made to be basically the exact specs of that original shovel that I played on that video, only I improved a couple of small design elements, so like, you know, improved the tuners, improved the pickup, um, tighten things up a little bit, and uh, you can actually watch me uh, unboxing the very first Justin Johnson signature shovel guitar on my YouTube channel or my Facebook page and see exactly what they look like, too. And you can get those uh, on my store page at justinjohnsonlive.com. Or, you know, even better, to help make the album possible, get them on my Kickstarter um, page, and that'll go uh, go to help you make this album even better. You know, I, I, really, I really hope that, that my thoughts of making beer cans and the drums kick off, because I could get the phone call, we need more beer cans, Benny, coming up, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just kind of coming up. <laughs> so, uh, um, I've, I've heard that happen before, believe me. <laughs> That's just like what Cigars, they'll they'll get some with the cigars still in them, and they'll act like you know. Well, I guess I got to get some 
more cigars so that I have more, uh, you know, bodies to make guitars out of. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, in closing of this interview, is there anything you'd like to just say or just, you got open form to speak your mind to the fans in the music world? Well, you know, uh, one of the things I think is great about where we are right now, you know, the music business, the music industry um, is great, you know, and it's easy to villainize things like that. Um, but, you know, one of the things that's awesome about right now with, with the internet, with social media, with the ability for people to reach a worldwide audience is that, you know, the fans have the ability now more than ever in, in the history of the world, you know, in the music industry. The fans have the ability to create the trends that they want to see in music, you know. So if, if you, as a fan, like something, you know, support it, purchase it, you know, buy a CD, download the song. Um, there's a lot of artists that are, you know, were always attached to major labels that are becoming independent artists now because they have a fan base, you know, to, to be able to make a living and make the music they want to make. And so the fans now, they hold the, the power in the music industry because they can get something, you know, like, uh, like I was saying about the Kickstarter, you know, that's being funded by fans. There's a lot of people doing that now, and I think that it helps make music more diverse. You know, it helps make music more sincere, and I think that that's making the whole industry move in the right direction. So I just want to say to the fans, just buy what you want to listen to, and I guarantee you there's going to be more of that kind of music made in the world. And if you go to Justin uh, Johnson Live.com, there will be links to the Kickstarter and to his YouTube page, and... Uh to purchase his merchandise. Man, Justin, I want to thank you for coming on the program, my brother. Hey, thanks for doing what you do, man. I appreciate what you do. Ah, oh, man, be safe.